Howdy, and welcome to something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be showcasing Kayak UI. People have been asking me to make videos about UI and give some UI suggestions for Bevy for a long time, and I've wanted to do some showcases on Bevy community plugins, so this is going to cover both of those goals. This is my first time showcasing a plugin, so any feedback is much appreciated. In the future, I plan to also cover using eGUI with Bevy, but I've used Kayak in a few projects and I've even contributed to the Kayak source code, so I feel qualified to talk about it now. First, what is Kayak? Kayak UI is a declarative UI built entirely in Rust, which is meant to work with any rendering backend, but it has specific features targeting Bevy directly. The core way you lay out UI is with the RSX syntax, which is based on JSX if you know what that is. If you're like me and you've never been around web development, then it's a pretty straightforward syntax to learn. However, the true power of Kayak comes from the ability to create custom widgets, with which you can design your own reusable UI components and easily extend the library in any way you need for games. Also, the tie-in to Bevy seems pretty well done, and in this video I'll show you how to flow both data from the UI to the game world, and from the game world back into the UI. And finally, Kayak comes with tons of examples which should fill in any gaps left by this video, and will provide code examples on every feature of the library. However, before we start, there are a couple of cons I want to go through. First, the crate is not on crates.io, so you'll need to add it to your Toml by Git and build the docs locally yourself. There's also many small bugs and missing features, but so far they've been very receptive to small bug fixing pull requests. The library uses many of the same names as Bevy, including names like app and key code, which require careful handling to prevent weird collisions. Kayak is also experimental and developed by a small team, so updates and Bevy version changes may be a bit slow. I haven't found a good way to position UI in WorldSpace, but that feature should be possible to add if anyone's up to it. Kayak does not integrate with the inspector, so editing the UI at runtime for rapid iterations is difficult, but this will be a common complaint for many community plugins. Also, Kayak uses a weird font format that needs an external tool to create the files for. The biggest con, however, for me is not being able to use sprite sheet images in UI. Bevy also has this problem, but for Kayak, I've opened a pull request that's being reviewed, which will add this feature. Until this lands, I have a code block that can copy the data out of a sprite into a standalone image and then use that handle in the UI. Overall, though, this has become my favorite way to do UI in Bevy, and I love the extensibility of the widget system. Now on to Kayak's API layout. Overall, the layout is very clean once you build the docs. The main thing we'll look at is the widgets module. Here you can see all of the built-in widgets that you can use to build your UI. Each one comes with a type for the widget and a type for its properties. For example, let's look at the text widget. Specifically, we want to look at the text props because that's how we'll customize the widget. Here we see the contents that will be printed, the ability to set up the font, some event handling functions that we'll cover in the code example, and a style. Style is the heart of this library. Style lets you decide exactly how elements should be laid out, and the docs elaborate on every one of the fields and what they affect. There is a hierarchy system where widgets will inherit properties from the parents, and more specific properties will overwrite their generic versions. The magic happens using the style props enum, which tracks if a value is specified, or if it should be decided by its parents or defaults. Widgets can try to fill out the default values, but not overwrite values you have specified. Finally, we see a couple of other standard UI enums like units, which will let you decide if a measurement is a percent or pixels. Overall, this page is the meat of the docs, and the widgets module is where you'll spend most of your time. Now let's move on to using Kayak in a real code example. As always, I'm going to start from my template, which sets up the basics like an eGUI inspector and a camera. One thing to note about the template is I don't use the dynamic flag by default because it's tricky on Windows sometimes but if it works on your machine, I highly recommend it for faster compiles. First, let's add Kayak UI to the Toml by the GitHub link and add the feature for the Bevy renderer support. Now we can add the Bevy Kayak UI plugin to our app. Next, let's create a startup system to create our basic UI and set up Kayak. First, we need to create a UI camera, making sure to use the bundle from Kayak and not from Bevy. We also probably want to set up a default font for our text, so now is a good time to talk about fonts. We can use the font that Kayak includes in its source, but at some point you'll want to use your own. At the bottom of Kayak UI's README, there's a section about creating fonts. They use the tool MSDF Atlas Gen to create their fonts and give an example of the command to run. One note is the extension here shouldn't be .json, but it should be .kayak font, because they read it with a Bevy custom asset loader. <laughs> 
The tool has releases for Windows binaries, which should work for Windows users, but Linux users seem to need to build it from source with no instructions, so I'll give them here. First, you want to clone the repo, but make sure you recursively clone to get the embedded dependencies. Then cd into it and make a directory called build. From inside that, run cmake dot dot. Then finally run make and you can pass dash j of the number of threads you want make to use. Now your executable is in the bin directory. Usually I wouldn't include these instructions, but the git recursive pitfall got me and some people might not be as comfortable using cmake to build a project from source. Now we can run kayak's command on any .ttf font and grab the output .png and .kayak font file and put them in our assets. Back in the code, we can get the font mapping resource in the asset server, and then use the asset server to load the font and set the default font with our newly loaded font. Finally, let's create a bevy context, which will be the core resource Kayak uses to render our UI. The new function here takes a function which will be given a Kayak context and should set up our UI layout. The main macro we need to call is render, which will create the root of our layout. Just to test, let's create an app widget. Again, being careful to avoid naming conflicts, and put a simple text field inside it with the content hello world. This syntax is weird, but that's the power of proc macros, and if you make mistakes, then the error reporting on macros is shockingly good. For example, if I forget the toString, then the error still points exactly where the mistake is and tells me how to fix it. Now we just add the context as a resource to our app, and we have text rendering on the screen. If you ever want to completely redo the UI, you can just remove this resource and create a new one, and this is shown in the bevy state example. This library uses a lot of intermediate Rust concepts, which some of my audience might not be as familiar with. Basically, the closure here is just used as a way to pass a nameless function into new, and we can see the source code just creates the Kayak context and then calls our function. Render is a proc macro which allows the magic of Kayak to happen. Basically, proc macros in Rust allow you to create your own syntax, and then at compile time this will be expanded into normal Rust code. If you're really curious about the library's internals, then you can use cargo expand to see the final generated code. To use Kayak, you don't really need to understand how this stuff works deeply, but for the curious among you, I'd recommend John Jensett's Crust of Rust streams on closures and proc macros. These will show you at a much deeper level how these language features work and are a good way to expand your Rust knowledge. Now back to using Kayak specifically. Another common widget is window, and we can set this up around our text, so our text is a child of the window. We can then set up the window's props by making draggable true, giving it a starting position and a size, and also a title. We could of course give it a style if we wanted to, but I'll trust the defaults for now. It's also good to notice that styles can propagate down from the parent, so styles I set for the window will also affect children. For example, if I change the text color of the window, then it will also change its child's text color. Finally, let's add one more built-in widget, the button. A button can have text, an image, or anything as its children, and I often like to make its background color transparent so it's just the functionality of a button. To use a button, we want to look at the onEvent member of its props. This exists on many widgets and will work exactly the same on them. OnEvent's type looks intimidating, but the core way to use this is to call new and then pass in another closure or function which takes a kayak context and the event. The event contains an event type which will show you all the different events the buttons will capture and you can match against them. The context has many interesting functions, but the most powerful in my opinion is query world, which will basically let you make a system that can run on a given click. For example, let's create a player component with a health value and spawn one entity with this component. Now when we create our on event, we will check if the event is a click and use the context to query for all players and give them 10 health. Finally, let's create the button widget with our event. Now if I look in the eGUI inspector, I can see that every time I click the button, the player gains 10 health. Overall, this covers a lot of the basics of using the built-in widgets, but a really powerful tool Kayak offers is the ability to create our own widgets. You can create a widget using the pound widget attribute before a function, and then inside of this use the RSX macro, not the render macro, to create a layout which contains any arrangement of widgets. You can also define your own prop struct just like the library does, as long as it derives widget props. A good example of this is the Windows widget we used earlier. Here we see the declaration of the widget with its attribute, and the setup of the widget's properties.
Then we see the use of states, which we'll come back to later, which will allow for dragging. We see a drag handler, which is an on event like we created for the button. Then we see a bunch of styling. And finally, at the end, we see the window widget is made up out of a background and the text for the title, and then an element containing the children we used on the widget. This nesting is one of the core powers of Kayak, and it allows you to build up very complex widgets using only the basic building blocks. An example of this in use is in the game being developed by this channel's community, which currently uses Kayak UI, and I'll link its GitHub in the description. Here, let's create a simple custom widget with no properties, which will create a window and some text, and we can add it to our main layout. We'll add more to this as we go on. Another common problem is connecting UI elements to content in-game. My preferred way to do this is with bindings. Bindings allow for widgets to update when a value changes anywhere in the game. We will use this to print our player's health value on our custom widget. First, in our setup, let's create a binding using the bind function and give it a dummy player value. Notice this isn't tied to the player entity yet, and it's just a copy of a player component. We could also use any strut here as a binding if we wanted to display aggregate data like an average of all players' healths. Now we can insert the binding of type player as a resource into our game. Let's create a quick system which will copy the actual player's health into our component every frame. We get the binding like any other resource in Bevy, and we can call dot set on it to change its value. Bindings are lazy and won't trigger updates in the UI unless the value we set is different from what is currently in the binding. Now in our custom widget, we have access implicitly through the proc macro to a kayak context through the context variable. Using this, we can query the world for our binding resource and get a clone of it. Then we can call bind on the context to tie this widget to that binding. Now whenever that binding is changed, the widget will be re-rendered. I'll print the health value into the text field just to show how it can be used. It's nice to copy the value outside of the RSX macro because otherwise you'll fight with the borrow checker, moving into closures, and lifetime issues. Which can be a pain if you're not as comfortable with those features, and it all runs through the proc macro syntax. Kayak also gives us states which you can use in your widget, which will let you track things like if a window is currently being dragged, or anything else you might want to save per widget. This works with the binding system as well, and the state macro returns you the state, a function you can call to set the state, and the underlying binding. And finally, there's effects, which will allow you to run functions whenever a binding changes. The hooks example shows you how you can wire all three of these together to create some complex behavior. For the source code provided with this tutorial, I've created a simple slider box where you can click on the square and move it around the rectangle. This is mostly code taken and repurposed from the window widget. I also take the current position of the box as its x and y percentage and put them into a resource, allowing them to be used in the game. This is seen by a simple system printing out this resource whenever it changes. This simple widget could be used to create many different things, like a volume bar for a settings menu. Using context.queryworld is my preferred way of communicating back into the game world from the UI, and the survival game uses bevy events to tie the UI back into our game there. Full source code for this example is of course provided in the description. There are plenty of other things in Kayak I could show, but for a showcase I think I've presented enough material for you to explore the library on your own, and there are tons of examples and built-in widgets which will show you how to do various things. There's even examples of handling world interaction, where you can prevent the player from clicking through the UI into the world. This library still has some rough patches around the edges, but the extensibility of the widget system is very interesting, and I'm eager to see it grow. I'd recommend trying it out in your games to see what you can come up with. Feel free to share any cool widgets you make on my Discord, which is linked in the description. I think widgets can be as shareable as plugins, and this is a great UI library that I'd like to see a community grow around. As always, thank you so much to my Patreons, and please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.